What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Comfort Zone, your place for some casual, comfortable commander. I'm your host, Dan. That's your host, John. John, what are we doing today? Today, we're going to get into a battle devoid of color, but hopefully not devoid of life. I'm going to be running the Peregrine Dynamo, uh, who allows me to copy artifact synergy. So we're going to take something dumb and try to make it a little dumber. Sweet. And I don't know about that whole not devoid of life thing, because I am going to be running Eldrazi Typal. And we're going to try to devoid all life uh, in the Blind Eternities. And we're being helmed actually by Liberator, the Urza's Battle Thopter. So not really on theme, but I really love this card because it is a Flash Enabler. You guys have heard me say it before, but Flash Enablers are amazing. It lets me play interactively and responsively and hopefully sneak out some of the big bad mana devourers of the multiverse. And don't forget, we are still running our giveaway for the sealed set booster box of the Wilds of Eldraine. At the time of this video's release, uh, Wilds of Eldraine has been out for a couple weeks. I'm sure you guys have been on the hype train like us. We love this set. So in order to celebrate the release of the set, as well as to say thank you to all of our early supporters, we decided that we were going to run this giveaway. Really simple to enter. All you got to do is be one of our first 100 subscribers and leave a comment down in the comment section during any of the videos during the duration of this contest. For all of the other nitty gritty stuff, you know, find details, see the full rules in the video description. And good luck. And thank you for your support. So, without further ado, get comfortable, because it's time to play some Commander. Okay, you ready? Oh, dude, I'm ready. Sliggity slamity! Uh, I got a three! Oh, wow, look at that. The three is huge. Behold, <laughs> a 17. Boom. Oh, uh, well. We did plus it. Plus three is 20, so... Oh, so what does that mean? We're both first. Oh, we just take our oh. turn simultaneously. I almost put my hand upside down. Okay, here we go. You ready? You ready? You ready? Uh, yeah. We're coming out with an Eldrizzi Templi. Um, oh and then immediately following that with a Relic of Progenus. I, I know, it's, it's Progenitus. Um, I can tap it to remove a card from, uh, or sorry, rather, bleh, uh, target player removes a card from his or her graveyard. Um, or I can tap one and remove Relic of Progenitus from the game to remove all graveyards from the game and draw a card. Pass. Uh, when they didn't, you know how to use exile on enough cards. Oh um, yeah. So we're gonna come in with a waste. Okay. And that's it. Be your turn. <laughs> you freak me out, dude. Why do you always do that to me, huh? Cause it's funny, and the waste is like the Eldrazi basic land. So. All right. All right. I'm drawing. Uh, we're playing Scavenger Grounds, uh, notably nice. another graveyard exile piece, I guess. Hopefully you're about to do some reanimating. Um, and then we're coming down with the Liquid Metal Torque. Uh, taps for one, or I can tap it to make a non-land permanent become an artifact and just do its other types until end of turn. Uh, Let me tell you, my cards are already artifacts. Well, yeah, yeah, how about that? <laughs> All right, pass. All right, so we're gonna draw. Oh. And then we are gonna play War Room. Mm. Very I'm gonna nice. tap two for a vessel. You wanna know what it's filled with? It's filled with thoughts. And we're gonna pass turn. Well, that was really nice. That was a good way to introduce introduce a thought vessel there. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Draw. Shoo. Okay. Um, I guess we're passing. Yeah, it sounds about right. I'm gonna draw. And Missed that we old are going draw to. Here. That's never good. Mm. Uh, we are going to come in with uh, with a Thespian stage. Mm. Um, and then I think what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to tap a one and a two and buckle my shoe. Um, and we're going to play the uh, Palladium Mirror who taps that two colorless. Oh, very nice. And we're going to pass the turn. All right, end of your turn. We're flashing in the boy. Tapping three. We're bringing out Liberator, Urza's Battle Thopter. Uh, it's got flash, it's got flying, it is a one, two. I can cast colorless spells and artifact spells as though they had flash. Whenever I cast a spell, if the amount of mana spent to cast it is greater than his power, uh, I'm gonna get a plus one, plus one counter. And that's it. Then we're untapping the right way, hopefully. Oh my gosh. Um, and then we're drawing and going to our turn. No! We missed the land again. Oh man, that's that's not, that's not good. good. <laughs> um, all right, 
It's going to be an uphill battle, it seems. We're passing. Okie dokie. We're going to untap. And we are going to draw. And what in the, what in the world? Uh, okay. Whoever built this deck, absolute <laughs> psycho. Um, yeah. We're going to... That's true, actually. We're going we're gonna to tap uh, one, two, three, four, five, six... And we're going to come out with the Skyclave Relic kicked. Oh, kicked. Because it's three to play and then three to kick. Very so nice. it's an indestructible that taps add mana. But it, and when it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, I create two tapped tokens that are copies of it. Wow. Mana town. Mana town. Pop population. population. Me. We have one of us. <laughs> uh, and that's going to be it. All right. End of your turn. We're gonna flash in our own Palladian mirror. Hey, hey the guy, the, the boy. Um, and the mirror. We're getting a plus one to counter because of the casting cost power dynamic, and we'll move to our turn. And the fact that we both have one of those is a uh, is not a mere coincidence. Very nice. That, 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 that was good. Nice job. <laughs> Thank you. Props. <laughs> All right, uh, we're passing. All right, we're gonna untap. Oh, oh no! Huh? You didn't play a land again. Oh yeah, we're 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 not doing good in the land territory, but we're gonna try to compensate. We're compensating. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That. Oh man! All right, we're gonna put a maze of Ith into play. Oh no! It's a very good card against my deck. That is because if statement. I ever play an Eldrazi, it'll <laughs> it'll um, be a problem. We're gonna do um oh uh that card does stuff. Uh, we're gonna tap uh these two and one of these. Oh. Yeah, we're gonna come with a Foundry Inspector. We're gonna reduce the cost of my dudes. Okay. My artifact dudes specifically. Nice. And then um oh man. I'm, I think I want to use War Room this turn, but we'll get to that in a minute. Probably won't use it. Then we're going to do a 1, then we're going to do a 2, so we'll leave that other Skyclave button untapped. We're going to come in with Strixhaven Stadium. Um, Strixhaven oh, Stadium, so. not illusory to any other IPs, of course. I can tap it to add a mana, and then I put a point counter on it. Whenever your creatures hit me, I lose a point. Whenever my creatures hit you, I gain a point. And... Upon gaining a point, if I have 10 or more points, I remove them all, and you lose the game. What happens if you catch the snitch? Oh, the snitch? I think you get a stitch. What? Because snitches get stitches. Oh. Bro, that was way too deep for me. <laughs> way too deep. All right. And then we're going to read War Room to make sure that I can't use it. Tap three. Got it. Can't use it. <laughs> we're gonna uh, we're gonna pass the turn. Okay. Uh, end of your turn. We're doing some more of the 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 flishity flash. Uh, we're tapping five, uh, and we are gonna flash out Kozalik's Channeler. Uh, this is oh a, he be channeling. This is a four four Eldraz uh, who taps to add two. So just a way more expensive blading here. And we're getting a can. Yeah. Boop. Okie dokie. Work. So does Kozalik pay for Verizon or Comcast or like what's his? Uh, no, nobody does that anymore. He just steals <laughs> Netflix from his mom. <laughs> I'm Rackle. <laughs> 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 all right, all right, here we go. Um, okay, check this out. A land. Hey yo. Uh, arcane Lit House. Uh, notably, can take hex poof off of your dudes. <laughs> Uh, Hex poop. <laughs> sorry. Okay, all right. And then, uh, well, you got that uh, stadium, although it's completely counterless right now, so I feel like there's not a lot of point to, to whack in you. So um, we'll, we'll pass. We'll pass. And... End of turn, I'm going to tap it to to get one of them point counters. Yeah, that works. Uh, Ooh, the clock has cool. begun, bro. Oh, it's, don't worry. It's a slow clock. TikTok or whatever. That's that, that is <laughs> clock sounds nice. 
Oh, we're gonna crawl. We're gonna hope for something cool. That's not cool. Could be cool if you didn't have things. Oh, I got things, um, bro. I think the move here. No, I feel like this is the move, though. We can do uh, one, two, and uh, a three, four, and a five, and a six, seven. So we're tapping everything except this maze. Um, and he calls from us. We're gonna come out with Graz, the unstoppable juggernaut. No. <laughs> Amazing. This card is so flipping cool. So he is a seven five. Juggernauts I control attack each combat if able. Um, juggernauts I control can't be blocked by walls. So get all your walls out of here. Nice. Getting out of here with them walls. Um, and then other creatures I control have base power toughness 5-3 and are juggernauts in addition to their other types. Not bad. And then, uh, I don't want to, but we have to go to combat. Nice. <laughs> because they're juggernauts now. He doesn't have haste, which I think is a little silly. Um, so we're coming in with a 5-3 Palladium Mirror and a 5-3 Foundry Inspector? And what's the power toughness on the, the big jug? He's a 7-5. Seven, 7-5, five. Seven, five. okay. They're both 5-3s. Dang, that's complicated. Um, uh, you gonna hit me with all them decisions, bro? Um, uh -huh. I can't be losing all this mana potential that I have, because I'm down on the lands. I don't really want to be taking 10. But you know what they say. <laughs> Here in the zone, life's a resource. Let's do it. We're taking it. <laughs> well, I mean, think about it this way, Boom. right? If you use those guys for like three more turns, you're basically paying 10 life to add six mana to your mana pool, which I would do every time. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. Nice. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Anything? And I am going to put two more point counters. <laughs> and uh, it's your turn. All right. Obviously, we're going to do some doings at the end of the turn here. Uh, we are going to... We're going to flash in some dudes. Let's do uh, uh, one, two, three, four uh, to flash, uh, flash to flash in the Mystic Forge. Ooh, uh, that's a good card. Which allows me to look at the top card in my library anytime. I can cast artifact spells and colorless spells from the top, and I can tap it to pay a life to exile the top card in my library if I don't want it. Uh, so we're actually going to go ahead and look right away. Uh, we'll keep it on top. Um, and then we are also going to do one, two, three, four, flash in another beauty. We are going to flash in Karn, the Scion of Urza. Oh, um, Sky on of Urzi. Indeed. Notably, uh, sorry, also trigger from the Mystic Forge bumps him up to four. Uh, but then no trigger from Karn because it's equal. Uh, so Karn starts at five loyalty. I can plus one to re re uh, reveal the top two cards of my library. Uh, an opponent chooses one of them. I put that card into my hand and the other gets exiled with a silver counter. His minus one is to put a card I own with a silver count it, counter on it from exile into my hand. And his minus two is to create a zero zero construct artifact creature token with this creature gets plus plus one for each artifact I control. Um, and that's going to be it. Now we're going to go to our turn. Do, do, do. Oh, yeah. Draw. Okay. I knew we were getting that. We're going to look at the top card. Oh, okay. Uh, we are going to come out with a Ruins of Orin Reef. Comes out tapped. Um, I can tap to put a plus plus counter on a colorless guy. Um, and that's it. Let's go ahead and we'll plus Karn. So we'll bring him up to six. Uh, where the heck is this six? There we go. Uh, and we will reveal the top two cards of my library, which are going to be the Might Stone of Weak Stone and the Dream Stone Hedron. So lots of, lots of stones for you to choose from here. Uh, We're going to give you the dream stone. Yeah, I would have figured as much. So, and we'll exile. Might some Meek silver Meek counter. Yeah, Might Stone Meek Stone will get exile. We'll put it up here so you guys don't forget about it. And it's going to get a silver counter, which we'll use Big Daddy George to represent. Um, and then dream stone going in my hand. George Wash. Quarter. Oh, oh yeah. I couldn't tell. That <laughs> <laughs> I just thought you had like a token that you named George or something. <laughs> No, not in this instance. George is in a different deck. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, then we're going to look at the top again with the Mystic Forge. Okay. Uh, we'll keep that on top for this second. 
Uh, and then we are going to go to combat. And we'll come in okay. the air with the Liberator for four. I'm going to maze it at the Liberator. Yeah. And then we're passing. All right. Uh, end of turn, I am going to tap and put another point counter to it. Oh, oh, dear Lord. That's not good. Oh, yeah. All right. We're going to tap one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna come out with uh, with quite a spicy draw, actually, and spicy enough that I'm losing some cards. Uh oh. Uh, we're gonna come out with the mere battle sphere. Oh, that's a good card. Oh yeah. So when mere battle sphere enters the battlefield, um, battle sphere, battlefield, uh, I create four one one mere creature tokens, and then whenever the mere battle sphere attacks, I may tap X untap the mirror I control. If I do, he gets plus X plus so until end of turn. And deals X damage to the player or planeswalker it's attacking. And he's a 4 7. Actually, he's a 5 3. Yep. So, but I'm also going to make 4 1 1s, which are also 5 3. That is powerful. So that's pretty sweet. We'll draw there. that mirror in a second. Um, and then we have to go to combat. This is true. Um, <laughs> but, you know what? Uh, I am going to tap the Palladium Mirror in the Thespian Stage. The Thespian Stage gets to become a copy of another land I control. We're picking the Maze of If. The, the worst part of that is that you tap them opposite directions at the same time, which just screams to my OCD. <laughs> I switched. I mean, I, obviously the worst part of it is that your boy over here now is packing two Maze of Ifs. So if... Hey, I just went down one whole mana per turn. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> It looks like a huge issue for you. <laughs> um, and then, uh, again, I have to come in. So the 5-3 of this guy and the 7-5 of this guy. All right. Uh, so we'll do some things. Uh, we'll just start with thinking. All right. So 5-3 and 7-3. I assume you said it me, so I assume that that's your declaration? Yes, yes, okay. you. Um, so not we're going to start car. by tapping the Mystical Forge to pay a life to get rid of this. So. Okay. Uh, exile the rogue's passage off the top. Oh, word. and we're gonna take a peek. Okay. All right, and then we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, and we are gonna cast the Ugin, the Spirit Dragon. Um, oh. Oof which is uh, quite the Planeswalker. Uh, he has plus two. He deals three damage to any target. Then his best ability, ironically, is a uh, real trash town here. Uh, his minus X is each exile, each permanent, with converted mana cost X or less. That's one or more colors. <laughs> so uh, completely <laughs> relevant. Uh, and then minus 10. I'm going to gain seven life, draw all seven cards, and put up to seven permanents from my hand onto the battlefield. We'll see if we can get there. Uh, this does put another counter on your boy. I just got to bring him to a 5-6. Uh, so we will declare him as a blocker to the forge guy. Um, the foundry inspector? Yes. The 5-3. Five, the five yeah. yeah, and then we'll be taking um, seven. the 7. And I will put another counter on my point. Yeah. Okay. So we'll go to 23. And that's that. All right, so we are going to go to our turn then. So we're going to untap ins. And then we are going to draw. Okay. Uh, we'll look with the Mystic Forge. Okay. Uh, oh my gosh, we got so many things going on. We're going to start by playing an Ancient Tomb. I'm running out of space down yonder. Let me shift these. Uh, these baddies. This is the problem with a colorless deck is you end up with like uh, all unique and relevant lands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you, you kind of need to keep them all visible, uh, which is uh, often very difficult. Um, okay, and then we're going to start. We're going to minus one on Karn here, bringing him down to five. To put a card I own with a silver counter on it from exile into my hand, we're going to choose the Light Seven Eastern, obviously. Uh, so that's coming to my hand. And then... Uh, we are going to do some spice, but look at that mirror. Oh yeah, dude. I mean, 
mean, I got the head. Cut. That's a level of artistry that you haven't dared to ascend to. <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> and it's, I really it's, like mirrors. It's quite impressive. <laughs> Um, thank you, thank you. All right, and then we're going to do some absolute craziness. Are you ready? I do really like how you were like, oh, I really like that thing right before I absolutely tear into you. Like, that's I what mean, it's you know, about. But, like, kind of, though. Um, so we are going to plus two on Ugin to deal three damage to any target. We're going to choose the mere battle sphere um, since it is a 5-3 currently. Oh. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and Bye. go blizzle him. Goodbye, Mr. Battlesphere. Um, so that works nicely in our favor. Oh, uh, yeah. And then we are going to... Do I have anything else to activate on my turn is the question. Let me double check this card. Um, no, we're going to pass. Go ahead. All right, so we're going to have to do some major think town. Once I draw my card, I have to, you know, think town about how I'm going to not lose town. What is that card? It's card of paste. Not helpful. <laughs> oh, it doesn't have paste, so not helpful. No, that's I get why it. I yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I could play this card, but I don't even know if it's worth playing. Maybe shooting. Yeah, I mean, uh, for th uh, how many creatures do you have? Oh, you have so much mana. No, we got mana. Uh, got if so you're many. curious, I currently have. If I uh, burn myself with the tomb. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 visible mana production. Uh, well, you know what they say. What do they say? I don't. You do. I don't oh, know what do they say. Oh, yeah. They say, <laughs> they say nothing. They say full swing pass. <laughs> I mean... See, I knew it. <laughs> so we're going to come in with the Peregrine Dynamo. <laughs> My commander. Sweet. Um, he is normally a 1-5, but he's actually a 5-3. He does have haste, though. Um, hmm. And then I can tap one and tap him to copy, target, activated, or a triggered ability I control from another legendary source that is not a commander. Um, I can choose new targets. Right now, he reads 5-3 with haste for 3 mana. Sweet. Um, then we're gonna... So does the um, does the uh, what is the trigger on the stadium exactly for the ten counters? Is it when you get the tenth, or is it like an upkeep and it checks? It is. I'm pretty sure it's the bottom here. So whenever a creature I control deals combat damage to an opponent, put a point counter on Strict Haven Stadium. Then if uh, I have ten, on it. so you have to get. So it, it has combat. to be when I get it, and I have to do it in combat. It. That's actually side note. I really like that about the card. You can't just like tap on tap, tap on tap, and just just hope yeah. you get it. You have to do it in a combat step. Yeah, that's, that's cool. cool. Um, then um, we're gonna do. Uh, oh no, I can't. Oh, because yeah. my cost reduction and two maze of its. Oh yeah. Well, you know what they say. Go to combat. <laughs> I'm coming in with a 7-5 and count of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Five threes. Okay. Um, so we're going to respond to the declaration of attackers. Mm -hmm. We're going to start by doing uh, 1, 2, 3. We'll take the damage. We'll go to 21. And then 4, 5, 6 here. Okay. Uh, or actually six here. We'll leave the Eldrazi Temple on top, just in case. Just in case we get lucky. Um, then we're gonna play the Dreamstone Hedron in with Flash. Oh, right. Just taps to add three, or I can pay three tap and sack it to draw three. And we're gonna get a counter here on the Thom. Liberator. Um, then we're gonna move to declare blocks and then have additional doings. So. Uh, we're going to declare the um, Kozilek's Channeler in front of the Palladian Mirror. Um, okay. Liberator in front of your commander, whatever his name is, Peregrine. Yep. Um, and then the mirrors are 1-1s, one right? Uh, yes. And then we'll put a my Palladian Mirror in front of one of your mirrors. Okay. Um, and then... We are going to respond there, assuming you don't have responses first with priority. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then we are going to tap the Dreamstone Heatron for three, and the Palladium Meteor uh, for two to flash out the Mike Sto Mike Stone Mike Stone <laughs> Magic Mike Stone. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Might Zone Weak Stone, uh, and when it ETBs, I choose one of its effects. I either draw two or target creature gets minus five, minus five, and it can tap to add two. The mana can't be spent to cast non-artifact spells. We are going to give the big uh, Juggernaut Boy minus five, minus five. Yes, so that would kill him. Yes. Okay. And then let me look to see if I have any additional effects here so yes you're blocking him with the channeler him with the liberator and one of the mirrors with the palladium i would hit you with three creatures yes um so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to tap boom that's really dangerous i'm gonna tap one of my maze of this i'm gonna save i'm gonna untap peregrine and then move into combat yep you got it um, and I'm also going to tap the point to go up to six. Okay. And then I'm going to let combat resolve. Okay. Um, so I don't have any effects at this time, so we can let combat resolve. Um, so, so Palladium will get eaten by Chandler. Yep. Um, yep. You removed Urza's block. And then one of the mirror will get eaten by my Palladium. Yep. And then I will be hit, hit, three dudes. hit by three. I will go down to 18. And the points go up to nine. And then I can't play any of the cards in my hand. And it costs three to activate this, right? I keep looking at it and I keep getting so upset that it's three mana, not two. Um, so we're going to pass the turn. All right, word. Uh, we got some uh, leftover uh, business to deal with here. So we're mm -hmm. going to tap uh, Might Zone Big Sand for two. Uh, we're going to use it to cast off the top of our library the Swift Foot Boots. Nice. Uh, which I have no room for Don't anything like anymore. So we'll put it here. <laughs> uh, actually, here's fine. Um, and then uh, we're going to take a peek. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to tap um, two with the Chandler here. And we are going to flash in uh, the Tome of Legends. Um, when it enters the battlefield, it enters yep. with a page counter. Uh, and then whenever my commander enters the battlefield or attacks, I put a page counter on Tome of Legends. I can pay one and tap it to remove a page counter to draw a card. Um, and then we are going to Diary to Peak. All right, we're peeking again. Um, yeah, that, 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 that seems about it. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll go to our turn. On tappins, I mean, look at this. This is crazy town. I don't think I've had a board this big and diverse in any of our games so far. Yeah, it's been a minute. So we're we're gonna rearrange just ever so slightly. We got our boys. We got our utility junk. All right, now we're gonna go to our draw for turn, and then we're gonna peek for um, what's it called? Ooh, that's kind of fun. All right, uh, we are going to tap the Mystic Forge to get rid of uh, the Lotus Bloom here, uh, to be quite frank. I think that this don't work that way because I got to suspend it out of my hand, I believe. Either way, I don't want to break the rules, so we're getting rid of it. And then we're going to peek Arena again. All right, not what I would have loved, but it is what it is. Okay, uh, then we will tap one. Uh, let's do the Arcane Lighthouse. And we will tap the Tome of Legends and remove a page counter to draw. Then we will draw look. Hmm. Okay. All right. Then we will use our guys. So let's go ahead and start with. Um, do you have anybody that flies or anything? No. You really got to be thinking about your stuff up there, um, unfortunately. Let's plus Ugin up to 11. So we'll trade out a dice. Okay. And we'll just eat one of the mirror. Okay. Do okay. damage. And then we will uh, minus two on Karn, bringing him to three to create the Karn struct, as people usually call it. Uh, plus oh, plus yeah. one for each artifact. I'll uh, do some dabblings or doodlings with that in just a moment. Uh, and then uh, we got. Um, we got to find some. Flim Flam Eldrees. Let's look at the top again, because I forgot what it was. Uh, how do we do that? Come on now. 
Um, we'll play a land for turn because I haven't done that. Labyrinth of Scophos, which is uh, just expensive Maze of If. I have to pay four and tap it to if things. Yeah. Um, yep. All right, we are going to go ahead and pay one. And we are going to move the Swift Boots onto our Construct. Don't like that. Um, which is going to be, <laughs> uh, is it each other? Oh, each artifact and he's an artifact? Okay, nice. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So it's an 11, 11 currently. And then we are going to go into combat and we will come at you with um, the Liberator and the Construct. Well, we are going to Maze of Ith the Liberator because we can't with the Construct. And we're going to take 11 and lose a counter on the point thingy. Nice. We did it. Which is <laughs> not good. Right. Um, and then we are going to pass the turn hesitantly, but yes. I, you're looking in a much better spot than I was hoping you'd be in, to be quite honest. Well, we almost died. It was, it was close. Yes. <laughs> but I'm uh, wary about my responsiveness. So let's draw and hope that's the like worst kind of thing you're going to be on right now. <sighs> All right, so... We are going to take that terrible draw on the chin and finally use the war room. Uh, we're going to tap three. <laughs> we're going to tap the war room. And I can pay life equal to the number of colors in my commander's color identity to draw a card. <laughs> That's zero. Oh, nice. To draw a card. We're going to hope that this is something interesting. What the heck is that? It's a land. Guy Reach Sanitarium. There we go. Woo. Um, okay. What else can I play? What other cards have I got? I literally don't think I have mana to play anything else in my hand. We're going to do it anyway. Um, no, we're going to do one and two and three. Tap the stadium. Put it at nine again. Put the pressure on. And we're going to play Traxos, the Scourge of Krug. Oh, nice. Because as you know, we hate Krug. Um, oh, come on. <laughs> he's a 7-7 seven, seven trample. Um, when he enters the battlefield, he enters tapped, and he does not untap during my untap step. Whenever I cast a historic spell, I untap him. So there he is. All right. Uh, then, how many blockers you got? Three? I do, yeah. How many creatures do I have? Three? Oh, no. Looks like I'm not raising those points. And, uh... Yes, sir. Um, looks like we're, we're, we're passing the turn. Ah, oh, snap. Too close. Um, Talk about a close game i mean it really it really was up until the the mites and meeks don't get in the juggernaut uh, i think that yeah. that's the turn that kind of got you there um so we got a bunch of stuff we can do we're not gonna go too crazy because it looks like the end game here but we'll tap three um four five and we will put out uh the gilded lotus oh. um and then uh what is this again oh yeah oh we'll tap uh this is why you play artifacts or colorless as well. Ooh, colorless, nice. We'll tap uh, one, two, three, um, uh, four, and we will cast off the top Karn, the Living Legacy. Um, nice. Really just to get him out there, although unfortunately, <laughs> to be informative, I have to also read him. Uh, he starts at four loyalty, plus one creates a tap power stone, minus one, I can pay any amount of mana. I look at that many cards from the top of my library. Then I put one of those cards into my hand and the rest on the bottom of my library in a random order. Or minus seven and I get an emblem with, I can tap an untapped artifact I control and this emblem deals one damage to any target. Then we'll look at the next card with um, the Mystic Forge there. Uh, no, one, yeah. three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. Um, that is an unfortunate amount of mana um, for the card that's on top. Okay, well, you know what we'll do? Okay, we'll tap two. We'll pay one into Relic of Agenitus and remove it from the graveyard as well as all graveyards and then draw a card. I agree. Then we will look at the top and we will leave it and then we will go to my turn. So that happens. 
making it happens. Um, draw. Uh, and then to be epic, we'll just ultimate Ugin. So we'll bring him down to oh, I didn't realize he. I didn't realize he was in ult range. Dang. And then we will gain the seven life. And uh, draw seven cards. Then I can put up to seven permanent cards in my hand onto the battlefield. Four, five, six, well, seven. With gotta be something. I have never done this before in my entire life. That's pretty sweet. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited. Uh, at least not with this guy. Um, okay. Well, ironically, like we're not gonna do much with it. Oh, is it just generic permanents? Ah. Oh yeah, permanents. Okay, so we're gonna get the Urza's power plant. Urza's mine. Uh, you wish I had the next one, but I don't. <laughs> uh, ah. I'll put a waste cell. I will put out a mirror shield, which is an artifact that equips for hexproof. Blah blah blah. We're not gonna bother like showing you guys the deets on these, just given the space we're at. And then we'll put out Path Razor of Ulamog, which is Annihilator 3. Finally, uh, an Eldrazi. I know, right? <laughs> Finally. Well, I had Kozlik's Chandler repping this whole game, so. Ah. Um, Annihilator 3, he can't be blocked except by three or more creatures. He's a 9-9. Nine, nine. Um, and then that's going to do it for the permanents. Oh, actually, you know what? We did 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We'll put out uh, the Gaia Reach Sanitarium. Um, and then that'll do it. Um, okay. So last but not least here, uh, we'll, just, we'll just go uh, for broke here. We'll make another... Uh, construct guy oh yeah I, again i didn't draw just based on like where we're at in the game it's like seems like we only have a moment left you know what i mean yeah um, so there's another one of those um and then we will go ahead and plus on karn living legacy just because i'll bring up to five make me another artifact that'll be a tap power stone uh, we'll just represent that over there um then we are going to pay one and move the boots over to the new construct. Oh, not the path razor? Come on. <laughs> We're, oh, yeah, you know what? That's probably smarter. Just, just to be on theme. Well, and I can't block. If I block him, I can't block the construct. Yeah. If I block the construct, I can't block Yeah, you him. know what, guys? We'll go for theme. I didn't even remember. Yeah. Was over <laughs> I also love that art. I forgot you had that. That's pretty sweet, art, right? It's DCI. And then I'm looking at the top yeah. of Mystic Forge in case anybody out there was like, why is he looking at the top? Uh, we'll tap. We'll exile land off the top. It's Urza's workshop. We'll look at the next one. Um, and then I guess, like, we'll just... Have, what's your life total? I'm at 29, Doug. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll try to kill you, I guess. Because um, we, got, we got things. So we'll tap uh, 6 here with Dreamstone and Gilded. 7, 8 with Eldrazi Temple. Uh, 9 10 with ancient tomb and then one from Geyer and we will cast original Ulamog. There he um, is. The infinite Geyer. Uh, indestructible Annihilator 4. Uh, when he's put into a graveyard from anywhere, I shuffle my graveyard back into my library. When I cast the spell, I destroy a permanent. Uh, we won't put insult to injury, so we'll leave the stadium and we'll just uh, try to nab the pair. Oh, we'll nab Maze of Ilf. Yeah, permanent. Which one? The Thespian Stage or the Maze? Uh, which, whichever one you like least. The Maze of it. I like the My Thespian Stage is foil, so that's kind of fun. All right. And then we are going to do some silly stuff because it's funny. Um, we'll tap uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, and then we're going to cast Desecrate Reality. Which is an instant oh. for each opponent I exile up to one target permanent that player controls with an even mana value. Parenthetical, zero is even. It has adamant, so if at least three colors mana were spent to cast it, I can return a permanent card with an odd mana value from my graveyard to my battlefield. I don't have a graveyard, and we're just casting this to kill the Thespian stage. Because <laughs> zero is even. We got it. Absolutely ruined. <laughs> We desecrated that theatric reality, and it is no That's more. Really... So boom. Yeah. Oof. Um, Oof. All right, now we're we're actually 
we're running low on mana, and we did some goofy stuff that we probably shouldn't have done, but, you know, YOLO. Uh, we get a counter from Desecrate Reality. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, because of the order I cast, I would have got one from Ulamog. Then I wouldn't have got one from Desecrate, so probably a misplay on my part, but that's fine. Right. Um, then I think that is going to wrap it up. Uh, and then can we, can we do it? Um, I didn't leave a floating mana in order to move over the boots to regular Mog, um, but this guy is fine. He, he deserves a, a, a spot in the spot, right? I spot think so. Oh, yeah. Let's come in with Pathraiser, with Urza, the Construct that can attack, and then uh, we will do uh, Palladian and the Channeler, because he also deserves a time in the sun. All right, so uh, that crush is scary. Urza's uh, Liberator, Urza's Battle Thopter, is also not as scary. The Karnstruct, however, um, is extremely scary. We're going to throw this 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 very not looking of anything 1-1 one, one mirror in front of that poor little guy. In, in front of the um, not very looking the, anything. In front of the not very looking anything. It's a battle of... It's devoid! They're both devoid! Hey, they aren't, yeah. it's, it's, it's full circle. Uh, we can't forget that trigger. So on that trigger, we're going to sack the beer, and we're going to sack Traxos, and I guess we're going to sack a land just in case I can... I don't know. We're going to sack the stuff. So there's all that. And how much am I taking from Mr. Ulamog Pathraiser McMahon over there? Uh, so you would take the Liberator and Ulamog's oh, yeah. uh, Pathraiser. So you're looking at a total of 18. 18 brings your boy down to a smooth 11. Smooth I don't know why it's smooth, nice. but that's what it is. All right, and then we'll pass and we'll see if you have anything. All right, so we're going to untap this game. It's out of seven counters, so we're not... We're not hopeful to win this game of Quidditch. I mean, Strixhaven Ball or uh, whatever we want to run. Call it. Strix Ball. Now we're going to draw. <laughs> and oh boy, we are going to come in with a Field of Ruin. Good land. Doesn't necessarily exile a board of Eldrassis. <laughs> and then what we're going to have to do, I can 100% guarantee you, you did not see this coming. We're going to go one, two, three. We're going to go four, five, six, seven. And we're going to cast. All is dust. Huh? And destroy exactly <laughs> nothing. <laughs> all right, that, that that's a perfect ending. So all of dust. Uh, each player sacrifices getting around indestructible. The hex proof. Mm, uh, nice. All permanents that uh that you, that they control with one or more one or more one or more colors. Yep. Yeah. That, that was, so might have been that... one of the cards we talked about. What? <laughs> and then then we are gonna. You know what? I'm gonna add counter number eight back to the Strixhaven Stadium. And then it's and then it's your turn. Alright, baller. That's it. GG guys. GG. Very nice. Oh boy. Oh man. How about that one, huh? That was uh that was a lot of permanence on your side of the board. I mean, like, and I, I've obviously lot. I've seen the deck more than once, but like I feel like that was uh a little bit more touch and go than than that deck usually does to be honest yeah for sure i mean i started with getting a little bit behind on the mana because i oh, missed yeah. land drops for like a minute so like usually it can get pretty intense a little bit quicker than that yeah um i think it reaches like somewhat near the point at the end but the way that the scales kind of adjusted by the time i was at the point where my deck goes off i was relatively uncontested so mm -hmm. it probably looked a little like more exaggerated than sometimes me going off looks because yeah. usually when I'm going off, it's kind of like at that pace in the game where like stereotypically you might have been going off and we're going off, you know, like yeah. in conjunction. So there's some contest, but obviously like the big swing turn, you know, that kind of changed the whole map of the game was just coming out with the, the Mike Stone, Meek Stone mm -hmm. uh, and nabbing the the old juggernaut. It's I love that guy. He's, He's so really cool. cool. I know you love him uh, for sure. So I'll let you like fan on that. But it's kind of interesting, the implications in that exact moment, although I can see the power with like Mere Battlesphere and the tokens, like that would have been insane. But in that exact moment, it was unfortunately kind of like the perfect thing for me to be able to um, bite the one dude with Ugin's three damage, yep. the, the Battlesphere, yeah. and then Mysa Meekstone, the, the Juggernaut, and then win combat 
It's yeah. just one of those trends sometimes you see in Commander where everything goes from like, oh, John is definitely going to win. We can see it right there. Like, duh. Like, he's got nine dudes. The stadium's almost full. Like, he's going to yeah. win outright, period. And then all of a sudden the game goes, you know Exactly, I mean? yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I mean, I do, like I said, I do love Mr. Make Everybody a Juggernaut. Something that I've, uh, uh, that was the first time I think I've actually used him in this deck. Like, I got to cast him. And uh, two things. One, I love that card. Um, yeah. But it does not really work with a lot of the other things I put in the deck. Like, even as, for example, like, sure, I had the Battle Sphere and I got to swing with Peregrine, but they both go from five toughness and seven toughness down to three. Um, yeah. So the deck is not really tooled for him to work as well as I'd like him to. And long term, I'm probably going to swap commanders and, and swap him out. So then I can make yeah. the deck like juggernaut dot deck, but colorless. I think that'd be a little bit more of, especially what you guys have seen from decks that I really like to play. It probably makes a little more sense. The all colorless artifact combo E deck was probably a little bit out of left field for my <laughs> play style. Um, well, and I didn't I, even get to I, do it. There aren't enough yeah. legendary artifacts in that deck. Oops. Well, I think that's a funny thing, right? Is like, I think you kind of see the glimmer of like the chase idea in yeah. that deck because it's like you still included these pet cards that you want to run which i do too you know that yeah. like me and john like we you know if, if you watch our our evolution like uh, of a commander player kind of the stages of a commander player episode of the podcast like we yeah. talk about this but we're in a stage where you know we really we stopped optimizing for like power and strength but we have a few decks that are are up there you know so that we can make sure to sit down at tables where it is a high power game and still have fun in that way certainly fun Totally don't judge anybody for doing it. We still have decks like that. But most of the time when we're brewing now, we're looking at pet cards. We're looking at goofy things we can yeah. accomplish. You know, we're looking at things that we think are going to be more fun and interactive uh, and maybe a little down on the power scale. So a lot of times you'll see us, like, even in these situations, we're playing a deck that might be, like, a little bit more call for the gas, if you will. Mm -hmm. But we've snuck in a couple of those, like, little ideas that we want to play around with. So John has talked about doing this before, like, switching over to the the juggernaut guy and actually th i think that'd be really cool i mean uh if you guys have any ideas about it feel free uh, feel free to uh throw them down in the comments oh, yes. but it'd be really interesting you know because again any of those tokens like the mere battlesphere like coming in with the four one ones i know he's a four seven whatever but like it's still incredible when you think about the implications with the juggernaut oh yeah um so I, I really like the implications with that card and the certain mm -hmm. things that you could tool around with it. Otherwise, Stadium is really fun. I, I you know when you first put this deck together, even with its current build, like knowing that, that was kind of like one of the the chase win cons. Yeah, uh, always makes me laugh and smile. I think it's a fun element and a cool way to win. As far as cards that say like, "Ooh, you win the game on them." Yeah, this one you have to really work for it. It's combat based, like you were mentioning, uh, and it definitely put pressure on and put a clock on the game. Um, oh, yeah. I certainly thought I was going to lose to it. Um, there was that, you said there was a, the one missed trigger, which definitely could have reshaped things. At that time, I still had the six mana left over yeah, so and, you... and the ability to play a creature out of my hand. So I could have adjusted things for blocks, but it was, it was that close. It was like skinny yeah. your teeth close, oh, yeah. you know? Yeah. But it was what fun. do you think? No, I think, yeah. I think it was fun. I, I love alternate win cons. Again, something else we talked about. Like, And that's one that I lo would love to get on camera, but I, I've done it before. Like, It was one of those cards where, it, to me, it's a very interactive you-lose-the-game card. It's not something that there's no interaction. There's not like, oh, there's nothing I could do about it. Like, You have to work for it, like you said, and it gives you plenty of opportunity, especially in that thing with something like Urza's Battlecopter where he, he flies, um, yeah. where there can be a very back and forth exchanging of points, which is exactly yeah. what I want out of that card. Um, so I'm, I'm glad I have it in. And if I change the deck to the Juggernaut deck, I will certainly be making that a mainstay like win yeah. card deck. Actually, I think it would be even kind of more interesting in that variant of the build because you're forced to go all in mm -hmm. and then kind of leave yourself a little open with the exception of like, you know, certain strategies you could use to untap dudes yeah. and whatever. But like leaving yourself open, it would be really heavy point swings. You know what I mean? Yeah. You go up to eight and back down to zero, you know, so on and so forth. Yeah. So that sounds fun. Um, and I really like this deck. If you guys enjoy things like me, I've said it on the channel before, but flash enablers are awesome. Um, I mean, they're really hard to play around. Mm -hmm. It does create like a little bit of a draw go 
situations sometimes, which I know some people don't like. I love flash enablers, especially in random builds that aren't focused on control um, because I get to get really interactive and optimize my play, you know, in game to be coming out with the perfect response, even if it's just like uh, deciding between two creatures that would situationally be better. I get to make decisions with the most information possible and at the most unexpected times. And that's just really exciting. You know, oh, yeah. obviously in a sense, flash enablers are also kind of haste enablers. If you think about it, since you can flash out your creatures right before the start of your turn, they don't have summoning sickness. You know, it's very interesting the amount of, um, you know, kind of things that, flash enablers enable so if you haven't played one i would definitely recommend it uh give it a shot it's a lot of fun or at least incorporate it into the deck somehow um and if you guys didn't remember we are running uh where, where to go we're running our giveaway so assume you saw it in the intro but just in case uh make sure to get your entry in all you got to do is be one of the first 100 subscribers and leave a comment down below super easy so before you jump off this video just go ahead and click that subscribe button the bells you know all the stuff that all the people be asking you to do you know do that stuff for the entry and such but then get in the comments and join the community we like talking about magic and we love reading your comments love so it. we appreciate all of the interaction going on down there so thanks for joining us guys let us know if you got a cool colorless deck because we're looking to to brew some more spice up in the comfort zone and yeah. as always we'll see you in the multiverse